three. So I was just in La Jolla, San Diego, and I know that's where you're from, right? Not La Jolla, but you're, you live in San Diego, right? I'm in San Diego, yeah, for sure. So so this house, so I was uh, with a group, and we had like a little cohort inside of this home that we rented, Airbnb or something like that. And basically, the patio of the house is on the cliff. So you basically are looking at the ocean. Stephanie, I was, it was kind of like the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. That sounds amazing. I mean, that's one of the beauties of, of San Diego. Like even now I was just like, what can I do today? I was like, go to the beach, go over right. here, go go out for a walk, go to the park. I mean, there's so much that you could do in San Diego. So when people come through, I'm like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right it's, it's yeah. like we know exactly where to go i mean you would know exactly where to go in san diego but it was great weather and i hear it's like always in the 60s right always in the 60s and i swear like lately it's been like around 72 for for the first time this summer i had to turn on the ac i was like what is going on <laughs> that is too oh much that's too much you know this guy right here he's saying happy father's day to all but everybody but he's also uh talking to you as well. Dad, man, glad to have you hanging out with us today. Thank you for chiming in. And Eric is here as well. Hello to you. Hello to you. And he says it's been a little gloomy in San Diego. It has. It has. It, so, so this is like the first time in a very long time where we've had consecutive days where it's been really sunny and hot. Got you. So when Did, I was when you there, were here, was it nice? So I got in on Sunday. So last Sunday, I, I didn't do the show because I was traveling. And Sunday was a little gloomy. But Monday, it kind of opened up. And, you know, when I say opened up, it was really nice. And uh, we went to the little, uh, where we were living in this neighborhood, a park was like four or five uh, houses down. So we had yeah. some things that we were doing with some of our team members in the park and in the house. It was just really, really nice. Even when we went downtown to just um, um, do some more meetings. What's up, Chris? Good to see you, sir. Andrew, uh, good to see you. And, and if you guys are here today and our fathers, definitely happy Father's Day to you. But I was on this, we had lunch and um, in this restaurant that was looking overlooking the park in the ocean, San Diego was really, really nice. So that, is that one of the reasons why everybody, this is Stephanie Garcia. Of course, <laughs> she is an all-around uh, host, producer, and I, I really could say tons of things about uh, what you have done inside of the industry because you were one of the first to work with Ecamm, leap into live streaming boot camp. It was a partnership yeah. between you and Ecamm. I was like, man, I can't wait to be a part of that. And I had a chance to do it, uh, not last year, but the year before. And I just think that, you know, for what you do for our community, what you've done in partnership with Ecamm is just so cool. And you provide so much information. Like, you freely give this information. What do I mean by that? All you have to do is go to uh, Ecamm Live's YouTube channel and look at the playlist. She has a showrunner playlist, and you can just – Binge watch Stephanie Garcia and all the things she's talked talks about, and you would be a better producer. Uh, you will understand how to price yourself. You can actually make money. And I have her in person today, so I'm gonna be quiet and be a fan like everybody else. And we're gonna talk. So I do see people coming in. James is here, um, and Chris says he loves San Diego. Dan has been meaning to connect with Stephanie like for years. She's amazing at what she does. She is. And that's why she's here today. And Andrew is saying amen to that strict. Stephanie has been an incredible inspiration in my creator producer journey. How does that make you feel, Stephanie, when people say that to you? Humbled. My goodness. It's a, it's really interesting to see because again, really when I first started live streaming, I was new to all this. I, I didn't come from a videography background. I didn't go to to school for a multimedia degree. I was pretty much a marketer that just decided, hey, if I wanna stand out from the sea of sameness, I have to jump on camera. Because if you could communicate with confidence on camera, then clients will be confident that you could get results for them too. And so when I just first discovered Ecamm, I was like, you guys, this is what you gotta do. And so to be able to share that knowledge with people and oh my gosh, like Andrew and Chris and the rest of the crew, like just, just to hear that, it's like, ah, oh, 
thank you so much. It's, it makes me want to keep giving to the ECAM community. That's for sure. Which I will. Creator Camp. <laughs> Creator Camp. So you're going to be there. I will be there. I'll be teaching a workshop on remote live video production. So that'll be oh, really that's exciting. Cool. That's cool. So, and that's pretty much what we're talking about today. So if you guys are using Ecamm, Stephanie, I really want people to know how powerful of a tool Ecamm is. Because, I mean, if you just go back 10 years from now, uh, broadcast television stations are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to do exactly what we're doing now. Agree. I mean, I, I had... Uh, someone else on my show that was talking about like back in the day, they had to be in the vans. They had to move the satellites in order to broadcast live. And I was like, we ain't got to do that anymore. You know, <laughs> you just right. tap into Ecamm, set up your destinations. You're good to go. You could set up a live feed. It makes it so easy for us. And saying that it makes it easy, if you're someone that takes the time to figure it out, like today, I like to do things simple. At one point, Stephanie, I was really all over the place doing little thirds and music and all that stuff. And now I, I really believe in content, but I'm going basically between two screens, you and me, and then yourself. And I have a screen for me, of course. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. But that's really the basis and generally what you need to do. Now, if I bring in comments, um, she rocks. You know what I'm saying? People are still talking about you. It's simple to just click a button and uh, it's all timed out. That would stay up. That lower third would stay up for 15 seconds and then go away. And we're still communicating. And I think that's the basics for a great live show. If you're a producer and if you have the understanding of that, you can go a long way using Ecamm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ecamm is one of those things where you decide how far along you want to go on this journey. I mean, I've had people where when I first started, I, I think it was just a single camera, a lower third. And I thought I was like the shh. I was like, right, man. right. Like, you know, and then eventually you learned about how to do the different scenes. And then you realize you could create perf like portfolios or profiles for different clients, for different shows, different destinations. Like my Amazon scene is very different from my lights camera live show. Very okay. different from Showrunner. So I, I like having that flexibility within Ecamm and doing that. And the fact that I could import it from one machine to the other, it's just such a breeze. I think right now I'm up to seven different profiles in Ecamm, which gives me different looks for different shows. Exactly. That makes it simple for everybody. And I see you, Richard. Thank you for hanging out with us today. So uh, for all of our live producers, I want to jump into it really quick. Now, um, what was your idea? And I want to start with this by going back to um, the Let's Get Live, you know, the boot camp. Yeah, yeah. Leap into so, life. You leap into life. Exactly. I almost had it there. So today is Father's Day, and it's also Sunday, and I try my best to get a little nap in, and I think I <laughs> napped a little bit too long, and so I'm playing catch-up right now. So every now and again, I'm going to skip a word or two, but just overlook that. That being said, Leap Into Live Boot Camp, what made you actually start that particular program? Of course. So I remember Katie and I were thinking about how do we get people to embrace live streaming? Because we knew that live streaming was one of the best ways to make yourself top of mind and tip of tongue, especially if you want to build your personal branding. Because again, like I said before, if you show up on camera and you communicate with confidence, you're already like shoulders, head and shoulders above your competition. And That's so right. the way that we did it was like, well, we have like this very active Ecamm community. Right. And we're like, well, let's let's teach them what it is that they want to know. And we had people that wanted to learn about how to set up scenes, how to incorporate multimedia facets into it, how to get deals, how to get clients, how to get booked. And we're like, let's do it. And we actually pulled from our audience to have speakers on there. And it was really fascinating because even then, I remember the very, very f first boot camp. There was this guy who was just like always constantly in the comments. I he was in the exactly Facebook group. Yeah. And he was like, mm, 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 mm. every time we had office hours, he would show up. And that was Doc Rock. Right. And he was literally, I'm, I'm pretty sure if we go back to the Facebook group, there's like a, there is a, a live stream replay where he goes like, I'm going to be on that one day. Right. And literally a year later, he was a part of the Ecamm fam, became a part of the community, started running it and all those different things. So really leap into life, open doors 
not just for ECAM and building deeper bridges with the community, but it also introduced us to who our rising stars are in the community and who we should pay attention to. Cause they were really the ones that like pushed the envelope, like, Hey, can you do this? And like, I didn't know you wanted to do that. Okay, let's do that. And then I think it really just spearheaded our product roadmap. Like if if you look at how often features were being released and then Mm -hmm. after it leaped into live, it was like, boom, we got another release. Boom, we got this another feature. And then all of a sudden, like Ken and Glenn would do like these office hours. A lot has happened. It really has. And it's been a real short time. I know that the pandemic for me, of course, pushed me into, okay, how do we communicate? How can I communicate uh, in this pandemic world? And live streaming was just like the big thing. Uh, I would say one of the reasons was because Facebook notified all of your friends when you were live. Now, they don't do that now, but at the time, every time you would go live, all of your friends, because they was pushing live streaming because they needed yeah. the, you know, people to be on the platform. And I just dove into that. Like, but I was using Ecamm, which made sense because it made me look better than the competition. Because there was some free software out there and you can just look at that free software and then look at what Ecamm had to offer and just the uh, quality of your stream. It was just day and night difference. So it kind of helped me, it catapulted me. And then, of course, being a part of uh, the Let's Get Live group, VIP group, and then into Ecamm. The people there are also helpful, but at the same time, there is a level of you have to look a certain way to be in the group. Because if you I don't, think that was the first time I ever heard the phrase "gas syndrome" gear acquisition. I, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, y'all, yeah. you know, is is everyone was trying to keep up with each other as far as their gear, and it was it was really exciting again. But it was also you found people that are like-minded individuals that wanted to geek out as much as you did. It wasn't necessarily competition as in, I want to be better than you, but it's like, oh my gosh, I'm inspired by you. Exactly. That, that is also true. It makes me think of my friend, Alicia Way. So Alicia Way is one of the most humblest guy you ever meet. Right. And he, you know, he would never like put like equipment in front of you. But he would always be like, oh, yeah, and I just got this. And yeah, and I just got that. But he would do it in the most humble way. Yeah. He had tons of equipment. Yeah, I think I want to sell this because I got this other thing. But right. uh, all of, yeah, all of me, he, he has the equipment and just the most humble guy ever. But it is like that throughout the whole group as far as people wanting to have the latest and greatest. And everybody wants to look good. But nobody is doing the backlighting to accentuate the hair like Stephanie Garcia. Like, this is really cool. I was going to set up a light in just a second right by me. Just for my hair. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it is true, though. I, I, I started noticing that when I would do it, every time I would hop on, people always have this reaction of like, oh, my God, is this like a photo shoot or something? I'm like, you know what? I just, I just wanted something different. I don't have, you know, the Doc Rocks wall. But you know where everyone has like their – their lights facing the wall and all that jazz. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do my hair. I'm just gonna do my hair. <laughs> it, but it's, but it's, it's a great, it's a great um, accent, and it's very yeah. easy, easy to do. And I'm not taking anything away from doing it, but I, saying it is easy. But the idea of just putting this light and yeah. making sure you don't move from side to side. I used to have one behind me that would just hit a shoulder. Yeah. To, to give a, a, a look. And of course, people do it from down, uh, from top down as well uh, to get that hair, uh, hair light shot. But I love what it looks like. So don't oh, change anything. I think sometimes it's those little subtle details that is like a signature that makes people engage with what you're doing. So so even now, in my mind, I'm not changing the slides or the scenes as much is because I want people to engage in our conversation, but also the way the two of us look on screen together. That's just another artistic or no, I artistic, love it. however you t- want to say it, way to kind of engage people based off of what they're seeing. Now, most people, if we're talking together, of course, they're going to be looking at you and not me, but I'm still <laughs> on the screen anyway. <laughs> but I'm still on the screen. And you can still give me that individual recording, right? That they to do, me was like, ooh. From a repurposing perspective, I was like, chef's kiss. Love it. 
So we have a ton of people. I don't want to get off from where I am, but I do want to say this because I put Chris up. Uh, training helped me separate myself from the pack in the industry. And that's, of course, Chris talking about his use of ECAM and uh stephanie what's the heck in the imposter syndrome uh you are an icon and you are truly an icon i thank you for <laughs> saying that because people it needs to be said sometimes and of course one of the things i do like about my show and the people here is that you know we really like to love on our guests especially when you take the time on a sunday afternoon to come on <laughs> i want you to feel good about it and of course dan is helping you out a little bit today you are an icon when it comes to what we're doing and i know we're going to get to some of the things that you're doing now as far as helping people that want to be on air host but i wanted to be sure that we kind of climb the historical ladder and timeline coming from you know um Leaped into live boot camp, and then how you actually went from Doc Rock being on, and then you have now progressed to where you're doing more than just the boot camp. Can you tell me like that section of time to where okay, we did the boot camp, but you're also traveling and doing remote production for people, even behind the scenes? Behind the scenes, yeah, a lot has happened. So I remember. Even before Leap Into Live, I remember reaching out to Ken and Glenn. I was like, hey, is there a way for me to remote produce, like not have to be on screen, but help other people produce their shows? And it had to have been around like 2016 or 2017. And I distinctly remember Glenn saying, that's not a thing. I was like, oh, I'm gonna make it the thing. <laughs> and let me tell you, because if I can make my guest feel comfortable on camera and not be there like on the screen right next to them, but be able to manage the scenes, the overlays and all that other stuff and really bring out the best of my guests. I want to offer that as a service. And so we had talked through it. And then for a while, people would ask me about, okay, so for Lights Camera Live, can you do this for me? And I was like, yes, I can. And so it started off with me helping a lot of my clients who were doing investor relations, like they had to raise money, they had okay. to raise capital. And they didn't want to be in another Zoom meeting. They wanted it to look different. Some of them were actually using OBS, which as we all know, I like to call the IKEA of live streaming because back then it was like you had to connect all these different little things. And right. we did a before and after of his show. And then boom, once we got his scene set up, it started to take off. From there, even with Leap Into Live, what started to happen is, so I started doing investor relations. I started doing summits. You've seen the number of virtual summits that have been cropping up. I've helped clients that were doing course launches that wanted to do office hours. There's just wow. all these different ways that you could do remote live video production. And I mentioned this to you because it's not, it doesn't have to be like a weekly show. Right. You know, there are other different avenues that you could go down this path. And then really what blew up, I would say in the last year or so is remote live shopping. So helping our clients right. leverage live shopping in the sense of showing their product, selling in real time, actually mm -hmm. seeing a dashboard that says, hey, I mentioned this product, look how many sales I got. Wow. So I've been doing a lot of that. I My favorite project was probably I flew out to Panama last summer and I was working with a Fortune 100 brand and they said, we wanna bring in all of our brand marketers from Latin America into this one room where you teach them everything about live shopping. And I was like, let's go, let's do it. All right. And it was amazing. It was fun. I got to introduce them to Ecamm. We talked about different platforms. Again, most people, like even now, even however far along you are with Ecamm, there are some people that still don't know about it and they're still that's fumbling right. with things like OBS. Um, and so that's really an opportunity for you if you really want to stand out from your industry is show them what's possible. Show them that you could brand it, right? I mean, like I'm even looking at this, I'm like, you got stars and constellations going around. Like that's, that's so sick. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a video playing in the background. But I love it. So, yeah, those things, it's those small things that if you know how to do it the right way and make it subtle, um, I w would always tell people, like, our idea of this show is similar to CNN, okay, mm. or CNN nightly show. So uh, how they were positioned. And it's not everything. So I'm not doing all of the news lower thirds, but the idea of how they would communicate through the pandemic, because people wouldn't come into the studio. They didn't have them live in the studio. You needed to be able to talk to them where 
whatever they are. And, you know, sometimes you are relying on your guests to come with great lighting and come with great audio and all that stuff. And, of course, you know how to do that. But it makes it so much easier when you're talking to people in the industry and they come on ready, they come on prepared, and they're able to help the people that are watching. Now, I want to tell this to the people that are watching. I have... A lot of you guys are on right now, and Stephanie has already talked about some things that can help you, but I only have a few of you that have hit the like button. So if you can, if she's helped us at all, just click that button real quick to let us know that we are on the right path for you. That's that right. being said, um, I know when I came along with Ecamm and I saw some of the things that you were doing uh, what really helped me was when I mean, it was a whole show where you were helping us price out what live producers uh, should actually make, what you should actually charge. And it made so much sense. Now, it's not easy a lot of times to be able to fix an email to say, hey, this is what it actually costs. But when you do the work, so someone would say, so my wife is an artist. And I get this all the time, and it actually um, is equal to live producing. She comes to do a show, so they pay her for maybe an hour show. It's yeah. not an hour show. There's getting to the show. There's leaving the show. There's uh, rehearsal for the show. And really, your price, it is all those things encompassing that hour to get you to the hour, you know, the skill set that it takes, the marketing that you would help them do, and also because people will come and buy tickets or people will show up because you're there, all of that costs something. Okay. Just like when you're producing, you just don't, oh, I'm gonna put, I just wanna do a 30 minute show. Well, it's not just a 30 minute show. When do you wanna see me? It's gonna be 30 minutes to an hour beforehand to actually set up. Yeah, all right. Exactly. And and all the things that you have to do graphic wise, it is so many things. So when you broke that down in your show, it just kind of, again, opened my mind to how we can actually monetize uh, the live production being behind the screen. And I use it probably on a monthly basis where I have people calling me. Hey, Strick, can you help? I don't do it a lot because I don't have the time. But, you know, for certain friends and depending on what the project is, I'm behind the scenes. I'll send the uh, email, connect, and because of the professionalism, I can teach somebody really quick, explain to them exactly what they need to do on the show, whether they're hearing just my voice because I don't have to be on camera or I'm setting up and then I take myself off camera and the two that are guests are talking to each other and nobody knows somebody is the, uh, the whiz behind everything making it all happen, you know? The wizard. Exactly. The wizard of Oz. Yep. Exactly. So I, I just think that it's one of those things that, you know, if if done right, um, not only, uh, well, first, let me say this. Please go back and watch that show she talked about. So we don't have to rehash how much money you can make as a producer. It is available out there. And number two, um, after you watch that, think about how you can prepare yourself to make those calls to people that may be looking for live producers. Cause if you're proficient at Ecamm, you could be making money today with this technology. Agree. Your skill set is your safety net. And if you're not out there promoting what it is that you're able to do, you're missing out. You're leaving money on the table at this point. And really showrunner secrets from the set season one. I mean, that was every that was a master class in the making. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I still get compliments for it. That was probably like two years ago. And everyone was like, oh, my God. I'm like, it, it is. I, I I laid it all out there for yes, you. Yes, you did. Honestly, yes, you did. I laid it all out. It's one of those things. I'm like, Katie, we need to go lock this up. I need to make this. <laughs> I know it. Put, it <laughs> okay, it's been out there course. long enough. Like, let's renegotiate this. This needs to come back out again because all of the information is there. And now, even more so with live sales okay yeah so you talked about something i never thought about thought about earlier you were actually working with um people that needed to not do zooms they needed something better than zooms they wanted to look they were trying to raise funds and raise funds we had fundraising yeah one of my clients we raised like a million dollars in a night 
using uh, as a remote producer. Mm-hmm. That is, did you guys hear that? Yeah. Did you guys hear like what you can actually do? Like, I think that's there's awesome. So much that you do. And, yeah, there's, and, there's, there's so much you could do. And it because of the look and the quality of what you can do, it just makes the difference. And people are willing to actually put money towards things when they could visually see something like this. Okay. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows what uh, they're trying. I would say that Zoom is absolutely trying. But when you combine Ecamm and Zoom, you got something even better. You got something, okay? so, you got something so magical, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, say, <laughs> take trouble day. I just need to raise watch hours. <laughs> okay, I understand, man. And uh, yes, thank you, Chris, for taking notes. That is definitely shirtable. Uh, your skill set is your safety net. And uh, uh, Dana said, I, so I actually just signed two clients to remote produce and create their shows. Awesome. Awesome job. Telling you. Uh, DJ, you need to hire Stephanie to automate some of your stuff. <laughs> Spend an hour. So I guess I do. Um, Stephanie, I guess we'll talk about what he just told me. I need you, you to help. Yeah. Me. I mean, this is one of those things where it's like, if you want this to be your hot seat, make it your hot seat. If you have questions about this, do it because it's not often that I get to hop on other people's shows because right. I'm a single mom. I got my own shows. I'm working on a book. I'm doing all this stuff. So if you're literally like, man, I really want to ask Stephanie this, like now is your time. time. This is now time. is your time. So, so saying that he, he put a cue in everything. So this definitely just say it costs a million dollars to work for her. Though she didn't say that. She said she helped raise a million dollars using million this dollars. technology as a remote producer. So guys, uh, I'm trying to open your mind up. A lot of times we get caught up, Stephanie, in our own shows or our own yeah. YouTube channel. Uh, my, and I saw this the other day in my research. So I am a content creator that is making content for a brand okay. on Ecamm Live's YouTube channel. This is content that we are making for them, which mm -hmm. is different from me making content on my own YouTube page. So a lot, this is just another way that you can monetize your skills. So if you're a good pre presenter, you're a good host, if you have ways to actually say, hey, check this out, isn't it nice and beautiful? I use my remote. Check this out, isn't it nice and beautiful? And brands see that you can communicate well and talk about their stuff. Guess yeah. what? There's an opportunity for you as well. To and there's a name for that too. Exactly. And I was going to get to that because yeah. I, I never heard that before. So okay. on your show, I had to kind of research it. So user generated content, UGC, am I right? Yes. I get a UGC. star. I get like the star stick. I know you, you got your sound effects. Where's your sound effects, I don't, man? I don't. I don't. Oh, I don't hold do up. The sound you with that? Do, do, do. There, there you are... go. I don't okay, know you how you this. like that. You got to find out how you like that one. Seriously. Well, here you go. How, how you like that? Okay. Thank you very okay. much. <laughs> I haven't even mentioned this before into Leap Into Live. So Chris and the rest of the crew, I'm going to tell you something um, about what it is that we do, but different industries call it different things. So I'm going to expand your vocabulary right now. What Strick is doing right now, right? He's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a UGC content creator and I'm doing this for other brands. I'm doing this for Ecamm. So he called himself a UGC content creator. When in reality, he's an on-air host. He's hosting right. a show. And not only that, though, but he's also a producer because he's producing the show. He had to prepare the graphics. He had to do all the different things. So if you were to look right now, there are a bunch of brands that are looking for on-air shopping hosts. You go to LinkedIn, you go to Indeed, you're going to see specific brands that are looking for talents like you. And the thing that's really going to separate you from the sea of sameness is not only are you a great host, but you know how to produce your own show. So when a brand looks at you, they're like, damn, I don't have to hire another producer or get someone on my marketing team to all of a sudden learn how to live stream because you are the all-in-one package. That's the beauty behind it. The other piece too is UGC content creator. Now, if you actually go on TikTok and you type that in there, you're going to see a lot of content creators that call them call themselves UGC content creators because they're they're creating content for brands but strict 
it's mostly like short form videos okay. or it's aesthetic photos and videos that other brands can use. And literally like, so that one of, one of the gals on my show, she's like, I'll create, you know, 12 short form videos for a client and on a monthly retainer, that's about $2,200. Short form video friends, do you know how long short form video is? That's anywhere from like 30 seconds to like a minute. Right. That means you just have like B-roll <laughs> like right then and there and you go to town with it. So you could edit that in Ecamm, you could shoot in Ecamm, all those different things. UGC content creators, that's like a whole nother field. That's really interesting. What I love about it too is that they're not trying to be influencers. You know, they're not trying to get like a million followers that they're not trying to be the next like Charlie DeMaio or any of that other stuff. They're just, they just really love creating content. Right. And then the other one too, that I just want you guys to consider is being a live shopping host. So this is where we have our good friends like Chris and Jim, you know, and David the that are on casters. Amazon live. Yeah. The mm -hmm. deal casters, they're out there and they're doing Amazon live and they're sharing brand deals. Uh, they're getting sponsored shows and all those different things. I'm telling you, there's so much that you can do. One of the things that you should even consider, if you if you like the on-air shopping host that like Strick is doing, I have booked so many opportunities where I'm a I'm a course teacher, I'm a course instructor. So these, they're like, oh god, okay. I obviously drank my energy drink, so I'm on it right now. Come on, let's do are we, it. Are we good? Are we good? <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here, here's what's fascinating. There's a bunch of like e-learning platforms that have like all these courses that they want to develop, but they don't have the talent, right? right? You do. You are that person. I bet you people are looking at your, your channels right now and like, oh, she talks about this. I bet she could deliver a course about social media for hospitality and tourism. I'm like, boom, let's do it. Because here's the thing. I have a teleprompter. I have Ecamm. I have, I have the lights, all that jazz. And I come with that whole package and they're like, damn. So there are, I think on LinkedIn, I probably have like four courses on there. I've done one with Creator Up. I've done another one with Tipsy. Like it's, it's cool because then people are like, oh, I could look you up. I could Google you and they'll find you in all these different courses. So I just opened the, I just opened Pandora's box. I'm like, Hey, these are yeah. all the different things that you can do. So come with the questions. <laughs> yeah. Hit us up. Um, Aubrey, thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you for making it. So if you got a question, just put a cue in front of it and just ask Stephanie, we, we're going to uh, be here for a little bit longer talking about live producing. She, she just kind of just told you like what it is that we can really be doing with this technology, especially if you have the ability to be in front of the camera and mm -hmm. produce behind the camera and you're telling people how you do all of this. So um, one of the things that I think that I know it took me a while to do Stephanie is actually building a media kit. So it makes yourself a little bit more marketable. Can you talk about that as we wait on questions to come in, like the needs as you present yourself to a brand? Absolutely. So there, depending on the different route that you want to take, if you're doing a media kit, that's most likely if you want to position yourself as an influencer, right? So an influencer, you're going to tell them what your show's about, what your demographics are, what are your analytics, the type of topics that you talk about, and the type of services or sponsorship that you offer. So for example, in my media kit, I say we could do a sponsored live stream. P.S. by the way, I usually don't just do one live stream because if because I'm a B2B influencer too, right? Okay. So I'm like, if I'm if I'm convincing you to look into another SaaS product, I want to have a four series. And the reason okay. for that is because I have to introduce it. I have to show a testimonial and then I'm going to give them a, a, a tutorial. And then the last video is like, now you have to act now because these are okay, all the bonuses stop. that you're okay, going to do. Right now, I know. So you right take, notes. Listen, take, listen, notes, listen. take notes. Listen, she's <laughs> given like this right here is like a, a roadmap. So you got four <laughs> steps. So if, when you're presenting to a brand, she's saying, Hey, don't just say one live stream, right? We got four, the intro, the intro, uh-huh. You've got like the testimonials, the use Test cases. Uh huh. Then you're going to give them the tutorial. The how to. Yep. And, and then, then the final video is going to be take action now. This sales, is what we've done. Sales. Yeah. 
The whole thing around it too is the way that I structure my live streams is I always want to have my audience to have a mini win because I feel like if you could accomplish one thing, right? You think back to Leap Into Live. If you did one thing, you created an overlay. Yes. I feel like I've got like another notch on my belt. Awesome. And then you learn how to create a scene. You're like, oh my God, now I created a scene. Now I know how to do this. But you structure your live streams in, in such a way that it makes sense for the brand because if you've never talked about this brand before, your audience is going to be like, okay, sketch. You know, right. is this, right. are you for real, for real? But even when you're pitching a brand, right? Even when you're pitching your brand, it's more than just the four live streams because you get the replays, you get the multi-streaming, you could repurpose the content repurpose. if that's a part mm-hmm. of your plan, repurpose it. So I'm just like, hey, I could take that show, repurpose it into a blog post. That blog post turns into an ebook. That ebook turns into a guide. That guide turns into a lead magnet. I mean, there's so much that you could do. And then you have that digital confetti. And they're like, all from a live stream? I'm like, yeah. Hey, Stephanie, it took, me, it took me like 30 minutes to get you warmed up. And you, <laughs> in just less than a minute, have given us two things that you can do. You gave us four steps to present or four things that you would tell a brand that you would do instead of just doing one live stream. And then you just gave us uh, the whole steps of how you position with the repurposing, with the graphics, with the whole package that people can actually present. If you, uh, so, so Dan said, okay, making a, uh, a media packet could be a long process. If you are a creator and you don't have a website. So let's just start with that. So, okay, this yeah. is, could be a lot. A one-page website saying this, all the things that you do, makes the difference. Like, people just need to know. They need to have something other than a Facebook or a LinkedIn to figure out who you are. I mean, they may see some of your content there, but send them to a .com where they can get all of the details. It could be a one-pager. I mean, it's I mean, it would be no different than an actor or anything like that. You want to be sure that if a brand is researching you, they're finding what you are saying about yourself and not something that, you know, you've been on somebody else's show. You need to be able to present it in a special way. So whatever time that takes, just take the time to get a professional shot. Like everybody, let me move, you know, get you a shot like that, you know, get you a professional shot. And, uh, you know, you don't really need but one that tells the people who you are and then list the things that you do and then have some examples of what that is, like some, you know, example shows. And it doesn't have to be a a whole. This is the whole 60 minute show, hour show. No, give them a couple of snippets. Yeah. Give them the snippets of it. And if you're looking for a media kit, I do sell like my media kit as a template. I mean, it's battle tested. It's been proven to work. Um, just hit me up in the DMs. Just slide in and just be like, hey, I want this. Because <laughs> literally, I've been in the agency yes, world. Hold on, Stephanie. Forever. You just told them slide into the DMs, but you tell them them to get to the DMs so that they can get the media kit. It just sounds so funny to me, but I get it. I know, I get right? It. I That's know, cool. Right? That's cool. So the template is battle tested and you have it and you're freely giving that away. That's Not awesome. freely giving it away. No. Okay, that's good. That's good. Let's see it right. <laughs> DM me for more details. DM, DM me. Yeah, DM take. me for more details. And and the thing is too is I want to help you make sure that your media kit works best for you. And that's why I was kind of saying it's different if you're an influencer. If you're a right. UGC content creator, kind of like what we were talking about before, you need to have what's called a portfolio. So gotcha. whether you want to create content for the tech industry, hospitality, and tourism or direct to consumer, which is like products, let's say beauty or whatever, you know, there's a certain look and style that you need to do that. And we could talk through that as, as far as like different templates that you could go ahead and use. But a media kit is really your first step in introducing to a brand, your channel, your show, and how it is that they can work, work with you. And so we talked about basically, yeah, you could pitch four shows in one, right? That's kind of like your price anchoring. Right. I hope you guys know this price anchoring is like, that's like your big thing. It's like, Hey, you want to like while out, (laughs) right? Let me roll out the red carpet for you. Let me show you everything that's possible. But if you want to do something simple, here's a simple way that we could work together. And I always think that like the simple way is kind of like, it's like the appetizer. It's like, if that's what you got just for that, just imagine if you actually went all in. Cause when you go all in, we talked about this at the last leap into live where it's like, it's a multimedia verse when it comes to your content. 
it's a media multiverse of what you're actually doing because you're not just a live streamer. Like if I have to scream that out, you're not just a live streamer. You are creating so much content and the way that you pitch it, that's the difference that's actually going to make the difference. So I just finished, Stephanie, a um, summer camp last week as well. So I was in San Diego. I had to fly back because we did a film camp here in Birmingham for some kids. And I had some phenomenal people, including um, a young lady from Fuji Films that actually helped run this camp. And Uh it helped me because I do live stream content, you know, talking head videos, all that kind of stuff. But the film industry is a cousin, well, we're a cousin to them. And there's so many different roles that you can have. So they're teaching kids all the roles that you can have on a film set. And I'm just there like, soaking it all up but when Mm -hmm. you think about what you do as a live streamer uh before i even um did the show the very first thing i had to do was make my thumbnail all right so that makes me a graphic designer that makes you graphic designer. yep all right The, the next thing i had to do was actually write copy for the show come up with the uh show title and um write the description of the show so now i'm writing copy right and, and yes, somebody asks, how does Stephanie use ChatGPT? Just like all of us, you know, sometimes you can just throw something out there. How is the, what is the best way to say this? And they can kind of help you, you know, kind of beef it up, give you more words, make the sentence longer, all that kind of stuff. I ask you that question later. Um, okay. So then you're a copywriter. And I had to get to guess. I had to call Stephanie. So that's probably was the first step after the th- before the thumbnail. But now you're a producer. You're producing yeah. the show by contacting your guests and making sure that they are aware and booked for the show. Uh, you're executive producing the show. You know, you could be an executive producer. All this stuff really does have a cost some kind of way. And uh, you're pulling all of the streams to all of those other roles. So you might as well have that role, too. And if you think about it and you can then write that down of how you're able to do all of those things. And I haven't even got to hosting and actually producing the show and being a light technician. Right. Mm-hmm. Being a audio. Uh, yeah, audio technician. Like, if, guys, if y'all are not writing this down, you're missing out because Listen. it is all a part of learning uh, the whole industry. You know, Strick, remember? Uh, do you remember when I was doing Showrunner Secrets from the Set? I would end the show and I would roll the credits. I was like, hair, makeup, set design, me, 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 me. Come on. Me, 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 me. Come on. <laughs> I was that's like, this important. is everything that you're doing. And even if you're remote producing, for clients, you're also a media coach because you're helping the client. You're like, hey, let me coach you on how to get the best audio, the best visual. Let me show you that if you're going to capture your audience's attention, this might be a better hook. So now you're actually script writing for them. Right. Yes. There you go. Yeah. So so these are things, guys, that if you're thinking about live stream, being a live stream producer, it actually opens you up to so much more. There was a question, Stephanie, I want to get to. Ms. Green says, starting from scratch, please summarize, and we're going to do the best we can, what the growth path after purchasing Ecamm steps to follow. So oh. after you purchase Ecamm, a growth plan. Now, to help, like, we're not able to get any more content from that question, but can we go the monetization route? Like, if you just oh, bought Ecamm. Man. How can yes. I get from using Ecamm to actually allowing this system to help me make money? All right, let's go. You ready for this? This is for Marlene. Marlene, if, if I was starting Ecamm for the very first time and I was hosting a show, a live stream, and I wanted to monetize that, this is what I would do. This show in particular, we were about like 40 minutes in. I've dropped so many nuggets for you. Yes, if Strip yes. actually took this transcript and turned it into a lead magnet or an ebook, he could sell that on Amazon. If he was like, you know what? This is a part of my masterclass and I'm going to give you a monthly membership on Thinkific or on Uscreen. This is a private now class of different industry speakers in there. You could charge monthly for that if you want to. You could sell that as an ebook. You could actually go and like take your live stream production and be like, look, you guys, look at this show that I produced. Do you want me to help you produce a show like this? So that way you could sell more courses, more books, more summits, all that other stuff. And that's literally just from one live stream. I would go out there and I would pitch the hell out of it. I did this one show. 
Look how many other pieces of content I created from it. Look how good I made my guests look. Wouldn't you want that to be you too? I could wow. coach you as a media coach. I could be the person that gives you that pep talk before you jump on camera every single time. After you're done with the live stream, I could actually go ahead and give you constructive feedback on how to close better on your next live stream. There's so much you could do, Marlene. I mean, literally, it just really depends on what it is that you want to do. I love it. I love it. That helps. That helps. That helps get her started. Uh, the biggest thing that I think that separates you from most is not only are you producing, not only can you do the behind the scenes, can you host, but you're also a great salesperson. I am. Like having the personality to uh, have the charisma, number one, and the confidence to be able to say, hey, isn't this great? Wouldn't you like to see yourself with this remote? Having this yeah. remote in your home could change your life. You know, it's just exactly. a remote. Listen, you could just do Zoom and get lost with everyone else that does that. Or you could produce your own show that people can't wait to subscribe to that are already blocking out their calendars because they're like, yo, that show is going to happen at this time on that date. And I want to be there because there's a special section in that run of show to get my questions answered in real time. Sign me up. That's that to me. It's everything. That's everything. Hey, uh, James Hicks, thanks for checking in with us, man. Gla great to see you here. Stephanie, question for you. Using uh, AI, chat GPT or other things, how are you using any AI to help you in your setup at all? Am I set up at all? Okay. So as far as like the run of shows, I'm still using my video script maker. And for those of you that aren't familiar with it, the video script maker helps you with your hooks, your intros, your outros, and your transitions from one segment to the other. I don't know how many times you've probably watched like a live stream and the opening is always the same. Hey everyone, it's so and so and I'm so excited. And it's like, stop it. You're not excited. Give me something different, you know? And so I typically don't use AI for that. Where I have used AI is picking out segments in my live stream show where I think it would be really cool to repurpose as short form video. Now, before AI, let me tell you this. If you structured the show that I've taught before in Showrunner Secrets from the Set, it's really easy for you to repurpose your show into short form video clips. If you're working with a client and they're just randomly going live and they don't have a run of show, using AI, something like Opus Clip, I think James was the one that told me about that, that one actually did a really good job yeah, in yeah. picking out the clip, giving you a virality score. That to me, I was like, oh, hey, that's cool. I like that. The other one that I would say as far as AI would be Descript. Man, I, I haven't let go of Descript. I love it. Absolutely love it because it will transcribe that live stream into you know a blog post if I wanted to. I could overdub things if I needed to. But still, I mean, my tech stack is is crazy in that sense. Uh, there's another AI tool that I use. It's a video script launcher that short form pros created. And it's actually, it's a script generator for your short form videos. So it'll say, what keyword are you trying to target for? And what's your hook? What's your script? This is how you should, you should open it up. And it's a free tool. And, and basically if you wanted to batch create content, get your 30 ideas, right? And then sit in front of the camera, shoot your ecam run through it. And then if you wanted to repurpose the videos yourself, you can, or just like hire out an agency and get that outsourced. There you go. There Does you go. Help? I, all those are great <laughs> tools. All those are great tools. And it's very important for all of us to understand how important it is to grab a hold of some of this new technology. The faster you get to it, the easier it would be as it grows. I did get Opus clips like early on and yeah. at first I didn't like it. Like it didn't do yeah. a great job there, with my clips. There's a couple... But, Two two yeah. weeks later, two weeks later, Stephanie. They I'm, made some improvements. It made they made some improvements, and then I thought about it. Like if they're willing, because I know what it costs to have editors. If they're willing to make ten videos scripts with the the score, and I can use five of them, I'm winning off one video. Yeah. That's there fifty percent. But if I can use five of those, I'm dropping one every day off of that exactly. one long form content. So those are the things that I think about. Oh, it didn't give me 10 videos. Well, okay, how many do you have that you can use? Let's focus on that. And let's see if you can go back and, you know, retell it what to do or, yeah. you know, or change this. the format. Like, 
I haven't told anyone this, okay. but it's true. Here's a, here, here's what I would do. Let's say, let's say you did get suggestions for what your short form video was, but you didn't like it because the delivery was off, or maybe the guest used a lot of errs and ums, but in that virality score it'll still tell you the psycho, the psychological triggers of why it would have popped off. Right. Right. So then you go like, okay, so if that clip has a virality score of this, if I just re-record it better without the filler words, then I'm done. Like use it for that. I mean, don't think of it as just like one thing, right? Like I'm I'm pretty much that person that goes like, think of it like this. Got you. Got you. That makes a lot of sense because it's giving you some information that behind the scenes, we really would not know some of the psychology behind why it would um, be viral or not. So that's, I love it. I love it. Guys, that's extra. You know, I'm not <laughs> charging you for that. Steph, you may come back around and charge you for that because Dan is asking this question. Uh, are you taking on more clients? I'm getting asked to produce more shows that I can handle. Yeah, I would love over. to be first. Okay, there you go. And uh, <laughs> Ms. Green says, mind blown. Thanks. I'm telling you, there, there's so many opportunities that you, you can do with live streaming. It's just a matter of knowing what's possible. If you came to me like, oh, I only want to do this, I'm going to come back with you with 10 more ideas. Right. I'll come back with you 10 more ideas, templates, a script, and how to pitch it. Just like that. <laughs> Strick knows this. Strick's like, I'm going to have Stephanie on the show. All right. She's listen. Give you like a million ideas. That's, that's, you got to have great guests, right? My show is only as good as my guests. I'm just hosting it. I've been a DJ. Like, that's why they call me DJs. Guess what? I don't do music. I did a song back in the day says, I'm not a rapper. It was a rap song saying, I'm not a rapper. Okay? Why? Because I have people that I would come on to my show or bring me their music. I would play it and present it to people. Like, it's not me. I'm just a DJ. I'm just a host. But having people <laughs> like yourself in the industry and inside of our community to help all of us go further, it makes the difference. Now, I will tell you this. I believe there's more stuff for you to do and that you're going to continue to push the envelope for all of us mm -hmm. because the more you do, and stretch your wings in the industry, the more that a lot of us get a chance to see that we could do. I mean, you already talked about how you can have an open mind to what Opus could do with the virality score. Like, read it to understand it, it not yeah. just for the video, but get the psychology behind what it's telling you to make it better. Like, nobody is talking about that stuff. Let me tell you what you can do. You want to go take... I mean, go look at Owen video. Go look at Luria. You could literally take one of their videos, put it in Opus Media, and be like, "Why is why is this so viral?" Now you're okay. rever oh, now you're yeah. reverse engineering, engineering. their run of show uh -huh. of what their strategy is because Opus is going to tell you like, "Well, this is why this hits. This is why you should emulate that." And you're like, "Okay." So then you go into Chat GPT and like, write me a script. Write me a script that has these qualities because that's what Opus told you, those specific qualities. Run it through. Go live. Make it happen. Wow. I want to have to clip this up because, you know, we, 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 in the last like 20 minutes have given so much content. I'm going to have to stop because <laughs> I don't want you to charge me for any more. You know what I'm saying? Like what you're giving right now is just so good. It's gold. It's pure gold. But here's the thing is I don't hang out with you and the crew as often as I'd like to. So that's why when I have an opportunity to spend time with you and the rest of the Ecamm fam, I give you as much as I possibly can. And the truth is, is that if you wanted more, if you're like, hey, Stephanie, I love that idea. How do I actually put that plan to action? How do I get accountability for it? That's where you, you get me on speed dial. You call me because I'll give you the ideas and I'll hold you accountable and I'll show you how it's done. So this is this is for those of you sitting on a Sunday. What can I do with this? I love it. Literally just give me a day. Hang out with me for a couple of hours. Just imagine what would happen. Just I imagine. She's calling you out, guys. So if you if you're struggling, a lot of times we feel like we're in a stuck place when it comes to content creation. Like I've been trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, you know, the algorithm don't like me and I'm not getting past, you know, two or three subscribers and my shows are not exactly what I want. She's calling you out. Yeah. Like she has done the work. 
and she could help you get to the next step. So I am just uh, the cheerleader today to kind of help you understand that Stephanie is opening her doors. Um, I do want to say this because I'm slightly aware of the program that you have. And before you leave, I want you to talk about that. I don't know if you're having a new class or not in the future, but you teach from a sales perspective. And I, I want to—I don't want to mispronounce the word, but it's more of the mindset of how yeah. to sell mm-hmm. and how to listen to people to be able to answer their quest to answer the question that they really want to know. Can you talk about that? And are there plans to have another one of those classes? Yeah, I love that you asked this because not a lot of people have picked up on it. But I will tell you that a few of the ECAM fam are enrolled um, and you're going to see it because you're going to see their shows, how they show up, how they deliver. It's going to be completely different. So what I offer is NLP practitioner training. And basically what that means is it's understanding how your mind works. It's understanding how you use language to make decisions in your business and how you communicate with others. Because the meaning of communication is the response that you get. And oftentimes as a marketer, you're always testing different ideas, right? And you're trying to see like what sticks and what's going to cause a conversion and all those other things. And NLP is really understanding not only just how your mind works, but how you could be more persuasive when you're working with your clients. And when I say persuasive, it's really understanding deep down inside, what specifically does your client want? What do they want to achieve? Then you have to ask them, how is it possible that they haven't achieved it? And it's possibly because they have a strategy that doesn't work. They have a strategy for failing. They don't have a strategy on how to succeed. And so really NLP is really understanding what's your strategy for success, because let's be honest, success leaves clues. And if you write the ask, if you ask the right questions, then you get the right roadmap to get you from point A to point B in a way that's easy and effortless. So that's really NLP. And it's a seven day training where we really talk about like neuro, how does your mind work? How, what's your motivation? How do you get motivated to hop on camera? But not only that though, but how do you get your hype? How do you get yourself hyped up when you're ready to sell, right? right. Because sell is really coming from like the root word is sale, which is to serve. That's my belief. You have to show up and serve people. You're not selling them some random product that they don't need. People will come to me and be like, hey, Stephanie, I need to do this or I need to do that. Here's what I have to offer. If you want it, cool. If you don't, that's all right too. So it's really, it's neuro, understanding how your mind works, how your client's mind works. What are their motivations? How to make their decisions? Linguistics as far as like, how do you communicate with them in such a way that it makes an impact? See, here's the thing. I'm a visual communicator. I talk really, really fast. I talk with my hands and all that other stuff. Strick, I get the feeling that you're probably an auditory communicator. Maybe from the DJ background, you listen very closely. There's sounds. And so for me, I have to pace myself. So I have to adjust my communication styles. That's, That's just like a sneak peek there. And then programming is how do you get yourself to automatically do what it is that you want to do? Because here's the thing. When you go into the shower, right? Do you wash your hair first or your body first? Most people don't even think about that because it's just so automatic. Right. What if you knew that strategy for you to automatically hit your goals and you mapped it over? Wouldn't that make your life so much easier? You wouldn't, there's no struggle. There's no hurdle. Because if you knew the exact recipe, the exact strategy to get from point A to point B, wouldn't that be amazing? Like, wouldn't that be helpful to you? I like Something that. Something to think about. Yeah. It makes me think of, I don't look like it, but I used to play football, right? And uh, in playing football, there's a lot of practice, right? And you practice so that you can make your body respond instinctively. Like I'm catching some of the words that you're saying, and you have to be instinctive in wanting to make those goals. Yes. Every time this is said, you automatically have a response because, yeah, I, I understand from a communication standpoint, the more time that you have in between answering someone's questions gives their minds uh, an idea of the confidence of what your response would be. So if you're able to respond quickly to someone based on your time rehearsing some of the general questions that people will have, the more time, yeah. the quicker you can respond with an adequate 
Uh, great response to their question. I used to do sales all the time. It's better. You show confidence. And that confidence, okay. whether you say the right thing or not, they feel the confidence and they're listening to it. And you're just trying to gain trust as much as you can. Exactly. I like what you're doing, Stephanie. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, and oftentimes I feel like when you're pitching a client, part of your job is to address all of the objections that they might have before you offer your business, your product, or your service. You have to, I mean, dang, we're going to have so much fun. But I'd be like, I'd be like, so you might be wondering, and it's a good thing. Let me explain. And so I know, right? Write that down. Write that down. I know you might be wondering, and it's a good thing. Let me because explain. Because you are now taking that, if they may have a question, you're taking that off the table. And it those words, whatever you say after that, it gains trust automatically. Exactly. And when I'm Based done on what I said, I know you may have a question about this. Write that down. Oh, there's so much. And so honestly, literally, if you're like, Stephanie, I want to spend seven days with you and I want to revamp my, my, revamp my whole business and all that other jazz, spend time with me. It's, it's one of those things where we'll work on your business. We'll work on your communication skills. Because here's the thing, Strick. Communication is like water. There's not a single day that doesn't go by that we're not communicating with somebody else. Right. Whether it's in the comments, text messages, emails, you're always communicating. And the meaning of communication is the response that you get. So if you're not getting people into your program, your courses, buying into your remote production services, there's something that's missing from your pitch or from your media kit that if you just made a little tweak, it could be the difference that makes a difference. Stephanie, I know this Sunday afternoon out there for you. I think it's a two hour difference from us. So that makes it about five o'clock. I yes, have sir. the smooth Sunday afternoon, Stephanie Garcia helping us out. Like what I'm really feeling is to me, it's a difference than some of the other shows I've seen you on because you're so quick. Yeah. Like this is more of the guru, the master class, the le the real leader of an industry, a leader of a community just coming on to help. Guys, if you don't replay this and then watch it all the way, you're going to miss out. Like I'm going to have to do an introduction to this show to tell people to watch it all the way through because of the content you provided for us. I am so thankful. And grateful that you've taken the time with us today to be able to share this. I completely see you in a whole nother light. And I think it's just because of the time and some of the things that you have to experience. And now to come back to talk about, you know, some of the basic stuff uh, with us, but also share some of the things you've learned along the way. Yeah. If you guys are watching this and you're at the point that the music edge is at, where he's saying, hey, Stephanie, you're pushing me to make the big move. Make the big move by contacting her to help you. Okay? Just contact her. All Sweet right? Job. That's all I want you to do. That's all I want you to do. Yes, we'll be rewatching this. She has really dropped, dropped some gems, and that's Miss Green helping us out again. So, Stephanie, I, I want to end there because you've given us so much, and I want to be respectful of your time as well. This has been awesome. I, I said it. I can't thank you enough for taking the time to do this. Um, we talked about people contacting you. You said just reach me in a DM. Is there any other way they can get to you? The best way to reach out to me is if you go to lightscameralive.com. There's a tab there that says work with me. And you could just send your contact information over there. My team automatically looks at that first. We'll prioritize it. That's the best way, honestly, because for me, then I know that you're serious. Here's the thing, Strick. I always tell this to people. I like clients that follow directions okay. because clients that follow directions are going to get results. That's true. That's so true. if you're like, oh, I'm going to snail mail Stephanie, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to send her a card in the mail, not following directions. Right. If you want to be at the top of the list, go to the website, fill out that form, even just mention Strick. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You were there because to me, that shows commitment. And right. if you're committed to your craft, I'm there for you 100%. Like, let's go. I love it. I love it. 
Hey, guys, I don't know what else to say at this moment <laughs> for you. Like, if you're out there and you've been really struggling and from everything that Stephanie shares, she's wowing me, <laughs> okay? And I host the show, so I know that you're gaining some great wisdom for this uh, from the show tonight. Contact her. Uh, follow the instructions. She's already told you that. So, uh, Stephanie, again, thank you. Any other parting words you want to give us? Here's the thing. When you're a part of the Ecamm fam, it's not just a software as a service that you bought into. You are now a part of the Ecamm fam. There are so many resources and relationships. All you really have to do is ask. There is always someone in this community that it's willing to help you out. Rising tide right. lifts all boats. I feel like that's one of the number one values in Ecamm fam. Right. So don't ever feel like you got to be shy. If you're new, you're new. We were all new. We were, we've all been at that stage. True. And it's one of those things where we always want to help the next generation of content creators, the next generation of live streamers. So you really just have to ask because your thoughts become your words and your words become your actions. So if you're thinking about it, ask, then take action. That's awesome. Guys, she shared the information today. That's all I can do. Thank you for watching. Uh, every Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you got me, DJ Strick, the host of the stream show. And I love to do this just based off of what you saw today from Stephanie. Like, this is a dream job that I get a chance to do. So, again, I will see you guys next Sunday. Hey, this is DJ Strick, and I would like to thank you for watching another edition of The Stream Show.